Hey, welcome back. Today we've got some farm-raised vegan-fed quail and we're gonna smoke these. You wanna see how I do it and see how they turn out? Stick around, I'll show you. Hey guys, Al from Eat More Vegans here. Welcome back to the channel where we cook meat, all heritage raised vegan fed meat. So today we're gonna to be doing ancho chili garlic smoked quail. It's gonna be amazing. So our first step is gonna to be to make our dry rub because we're gonna use our dry rub and our brine just like I showed you in the beer can chicken episode a couple of months ago. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link for it down in the description. So let's go ahead and get started making our rub. All right, so for our dry rub, we're gonna use one teaspoon of dark chili powder. We're gonna use five tablespoons of ancho chili powder. We're gonna use two tablespoons of garlic. We're gonna use two tablespoons of paprika. We're gonna use a quarter cup of mustard. We're gonna use a quarter cup of black pepper, ground black pepper. And we're gonna use a couple tablespoons of salt. And I'm just gonna take my fork and I will mix this all up, break up some of the clumps. And we've got a little over a cup, maybe a cup and a quarter of uh, dry rub here. So we're gonna reserve a half a cup of this for uh, using as a rub on the quail. So I'm just gonna Use my quarter cup measure here and put that in my shaker. And the rest of this we're gonna use for our dry brine. So let's go ahead and get the stove set up so we can get that started. All right, I'm gonna light our stove here. And over high heat, I'm gonna pour in four cups of water. And then I'm gonna add a quarter cup of kosher salt. And we're gonna bring this up to a boil. Now that we've reached a boil, we're gonna go ahead and put in the remaining about three quarters of a cup of our dry rub. And we're gonna stir that in. And as soon as it's dissolved, I'm gonna cut off the heat. And I'm gonna stir in four more cups of cold water to cool this down. And then I've got some ice cubes that I'm gonna drop in. Got about a gallon. Always do this pointing away from you. We don't want the hot liquid to splash on you. And then we're gonna stir this while we let the ice cubes cool this down. All right, now that this is nice and cool, I'm gonna throw this in the fridge, get it even cooler so that we can put our quail in without raising the uh, temperature of the quail. I'll be right back and I'll show you what we're gonna to do to get the quail ready for the brine. I have here eight farm-raised quail that were raised, of course, as vegans. This is the Eat More Vegans channel. Now you can get your quail anywhere. Some of you, including one of our first fans, Chris, are gonna go out and hunt them. Some of you will get them from the local butcher. Some of you will get them from D'Artagnan. If you wanna get the ones that I like to use, there'll be a link down in the description. So these are farm-raised, vegan-fed, and we're gonna start to get these ready. We're gonna butcher them. This is gonna be a little bit delicate work. We're actually gonna spatchcock these. So what spatchcocking is, and you've probably seen these with chickens before, is we're gonna lay these so that they lay flat so that they get nice and evenly cooked when they're on the grill. So to spatchcock, I turn the chicken over so I've got the backbone up and I'm gonna snip off the neck. And then I'm gonna just use my shears to cut along the backbone. Notice I've got one hand with a glove on it. That's my dirty hand. The other hand I use for my kitchen utensils, shears and knives and stuff so that I don't contaminate. And then when I lay the uh, bird open, you'll see down here there's a little bone that's protruding. So I'm just gonna snip out that bone. This is the base of the breastbone here. And I can pull this out. And you notice that the bird lays flat when I do this. All right. And then I'm gonna lay 
lay it down and I'm going to just press down on the breastbone and that's going to flatten our quail. And this is the same process we use whether we're doing chickens or whether we're using turkeys. Spatchcock is a great way to cook poultry. Okay, so I've got a bowl of my backbones that I removed. I'm going to use that to make a stock at some point because quail soup is delicious. And then here I've got my eight spatchcock quail. So let's go get the pot and we'll get them into the brine. Okay, our brine is nice and cool. We're gonna give it one last stir to get all those spices that separated back into our salt water. And then we're literally gonna just dump our quail one by one into the brine. And we're gonna leave them in there for a couple of hours. We don't need to brine as long as we do a chicken or a turkey, which we do overnight because there's not that much meat on these. So the brine will penetrate really quickly. Now what this brine is gonna do, the salt is going to actually pull moisture out of the quail. It's gonna take any excess moisture out of the quail and then the salt will penetrate and the spices from our dry rub will penetrate the meat. So it's gonna go all the way to the core of the meat of the quail. So it's gonna be delicious all the way through. And uh, with the salt all the way into the meat, when we smoke it, it'll be able to retain the moisture that it still has. So we should have moist and tender quail when we're done. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge for two hours. I'll be back in the miracle of modern video. You don't have to wait two hours and I'll see you in just a couple of seconds. Welcome back. The quail have been in the refrigerator in the brine for a little over two hours. Uh, but before we take them out and get them ready, just real quick, today I'm filming this on Saturday, October 4th. Uh, I don't even know if that's right. Alexa, what day is today? Today is Saturday, October 3rd. Aha! Uh -huh. Let's do that one more time. <laughs> Uh, today is Saturday, October 3rd, 2020, and uh, as of right this minute, we've got 875 subscribers on the channel, and thank you so much for that. If you're one of those 875, I don't know who you guys are, so do me a favor, leave a comment down here below and just say, I eat more vegans. Or if you want, if you know roughly how long you've been a subscriber, say, I've been eating more vegans for two months or since the very first episode or since last week, right? And if you're not a subscriber, you know, I would be absolutely honored to have you uh, part of the subscriber family here, especially as we approach a thousand. So hit that subscribe button and click that bell so you get notified when we have new videos. And then leave a comment that says, I started eating more vegans today. So thank you for that. So let's go ahead and get these quail out. So as you can see, they've taken on a little bit of the color of the brine. The spices have been infused into the birds. And I'm just gonna dry these off with a paper towel. And we're just gonna set these up on the tray. All right, so we've got our quail uh, out of the brine now. And uh, I'm just gonna give them one more opportunity to dry off and I'll flip them over and make sure that the bottoms are dry as well. Okay, so we got all the water off, all of the uh, excess brine off the outside. So now we're gonna use a binder. Now, whenever I cook poultry, I like to use a poultry-based binder. And of course, my favorite is duck fat spray. It's especially important with quail because these are such lean birds. We gotta add a little bit of fat for these. So I'm just gonna spray these down. And then we're gonna take the rest of our dry rub and we're gonna sprinkle this pretty liberally. And then we'll turn them over and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now, you guys uh, are probably surprised I haven't talked about this giant slab of bacon I've been making you look at since we got back to the kitchen. So let's, uh, let's talk about that. So quail sometimes on the smoker will get dry. And so we're gonna try some people, uh, and I've never done this before. Uh, some people say that if you wrap part of the quail or all of the quail with bacon, that the fat from the bacon will help it from getting dry. I don't know if we're gonna need it or not because we did a brine and we used duck fat spray, so we might be moist enough. So I'm gonna do half of these uh, with bacon and the other half we're gonna leave exposed. We'll see what the difference is when we get them off the grill. 
So this is Applewood smoked bacon. Uh, if you like to make bacon at home like me and you haven't seen our video, I'll put a link to that one in the description as well so that you uh, can make your own bacon. I'm gonna come once around the body and then just throw it with a toothpick. Okay. There we have it. So four bacon wrapped rubbed quail and four not bacon wrapped rubbed quail. Let's uh, see what happens when we smoke them. I'll meet you at the grill. Hey, welcome to the backyard. If you've been here before, you know Darth. Darth is our extra large big green egg, one of the four grills that we cook on here on the show. So Darth is running at 200 degrees. And the reason it's that low is because I want the quail to get an opportunity to get lots of smoke. And they're really tiny, so they're gonna cook quickly. So if I was gonna cook them at 250 or 275 like I did a chicken, they'd be done really quickly. They wouldn't get any of that smoke flavor. Also be really difficult to control the rate of cook. So. We're gonna cook at 200 today. Uh, we're running with Fogo Premium Hardwood Charcoal, and then I've got some applewood chunks in there for flavor. Love apple with poultry. Poultry really does well with fruit woods like apple and cherry. So let's go ahead and get these on the grill. Now I've got a couple of thermometers that I'm going to put in that are attached to my Thermalworks signals. If you don't know about the Thermalworks signals, uh, this is a thermometer and temperature controller. And it allows me to monitor the temperature of what I'm cooking on the grill from my phone remotely. And also it attaches to a fan called the billows and that allows the uh, signals to know what the temperature is on the grill and to provide airflow to keep the grill right at the 200 that I'm looking for. So the other thing I've got today is uh, um, I'm gonna make a base. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my saucepan right on the grill. I'm gonna put the equivalent of two sticks of butter, one package of the Kerrygold. And I'm gonna drop that right in. We're gonna let that melt down. And then I'm gonna put right on top a half a tablespoon of paprika and a half a tablespoon of garlic powder. And those will melt down together and make a really nice uh, chili garlic uh, base that will be back in about a half an hour. We'll be basting, I'm guessing it's gonna take us about an hour and a half to get uh, the temperature to 165, uh, but we'll see. Okay, it's been about a half hour. Let's give these a little baste. Okay guys, according to the signals, we're pretty close. We're a couple of degrees off. So let's take a look and see uh, what we've got here. Oh, these are looking really good. We've got some good smoke. Uh, let's check our temperatures. Yeah, we're a couple of degrees shy. You know what, the skin's not really that crispy on these. So I got an idea how we can crisp them up. We've been here before. You've seen this, so let's give this a shot. I bet. 
bet you that skin is nice and crispy now. All right, let's get these inside. We're gonna give them a couple of minutes to rest and then we will plate and I can't wait to taste. I'll meet you back in the kitchen. Hey everybody, welcome back to the kitchen. Hopefully you remember Leah if you've been here before, my awesome nine-year-old daughter who just turned nine. Happy birthday, Leah. So Leah, today I smoked quail. Yeah. Like little tiny birds. They look like little chickens, yeah. don't they? They're kind of adorable. Quail. Oh, hello, Foxy. So Fox is like quail, so Leah brought Foxy to the tasting. Foxy, are you gonna have some with us? Okay, well, why don't you and I try it first? So I got two kinds of quail, Leah. I got this one that I made just with a dry rub and of course duck fat spray, because I love duck fat spray, right? And then these I actually wrapped in bacon to see if it would make them any more moist. And then, you know how I crisped up the skin? Yeah. I crisped up the skin with my flamethrower. <laughs> Leah thinks I'm ridiculous for the flamethrower, yes, but do. all right. So which one do you want to try first? Um, I like this one. You want to try the bacon? He looks very, okay. He looks very meaty. All right. Should we take off a leg and try the legs? All right. And then uh, you know you guys can share with me. I'll just uh, this leg. This one's for you. Uh, wait, so wait, I'll put wait, it right. Wait, I have two legs, so that. Oh, you're gonna give one. Oh, one, one for Foxy. All right. Don't get don't get don't get grease on him there. Okay. Enjoy, Foxy. All right. Ready? Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, Foxy. All right. Let's get a taste. Ooh, that's really good. Those spices are awesome. Mmm. All right. So this is garlic and chili. All right. We're gonna do MTY. Moist. Definitely. Okay. T tender, oh yeah, rocking the tender. And yummy, I, I think we know it's yummy. So let's open up another one. Which one do you or want? Or we could just eat the rest of the <laughs> yeah, I know, we'll, we'll eat it in a minute, but they don't wanna wait. All right, so I'll take this one, right. and I'm gonna take the leg for me. I'm gonna one of the well, this one's for oh, them okay. though, so right? I'll take this one. I mean, you don't wanna deprive them. Yeah, she was trying to take your quail, guys. What do you think about that? All right, this one's for you, Give this him. one's for me. You got one for Foxy, one for you. You ready? Cheers, cheers Foxy, cheers to you. All right. Wow, it's really different. It's, it's completely different. Yeah, but it's still delicious. Yeah. I don't, is it as moist as the one without bacon? I think it might be a little drier, but it's, it's still not, really moist, yeah, right? Yeah, it's not as moist, but it's still, yeah, it's still pretty moist. Okay, tender? Definitely. Same tender, mm -hmm. yummy. It's not as yummy as this All one. All right, so the so bacon, good. yeah, I think the bacon's the winner. So even though we use that butter base, even though we use duck fat spray, even though we brined, look, if you don't use bacon, it's delicious. I don't want to lie to you, but I think if you're going to do this, you definitely want to use the bacon. So listen, hopefully you liked this uh, show. This was so much fun to make. If you like this one, make sure you check out this one right here. It's where I made beer can chicken and I give you the secrets to why my beer can chicken is so awesome. So check this one out. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe button's right there, right, right, right down there. Make sure you smash it, click that notification bell so you know we got new videos and we'll see you next week on Eat More Vegans.